and a little bit of a different plane path this time around. We have a 4 o'clock to 10 o'clock plane. Dividing the map roughly into... Oh no, pardon me. That's because we were zoomed in. I blame Sam for that. Oh right, well that's a 4 o'clock to a 9 o'clock plane. And that does make a difference because it cuts out the northern bits of the map that would otherwise have been available. If that was 10 o'clock, you might have seen a couple more teams go uh, Cobraria, for example. Cobraria, even. Uh... As such, I'm expecting to see Pozzo, and I don't really think people would be going much further north than that. Chumachera have three teams. What is with these circles? The exact same place. Now, quite clearly, dropping Chumachera is the correct thing to do because all four games have been around this southwestern quadrant. Oh, me, oh, my. Very, very interesting indeed. So uh, the teams are certainly getting some consistent practice in, that's for sure. Hillbilly Phil now, right next to these warehouses where we have team number four, Tea Party, also present. Getting extremely close now as well. Team four are up on the high ground, but little do they know how close they actually are. Gwen Dog, I think, is in... No, she's not in that building. They're just the other side of the building. Have they heard these guys come around? Do they know the danger that lurks so, so close to them right now? This is going to be a very interesting early game skirmish indeed. Coldy on the roof would have heard that window smash. I'm pretty sure Gwen did too. Duck is still in the building on the side. The rest of Team 9, they're rushing in now very, very quickly. Multicom going up to the roof. He's going to have a really, really good vantage point. He takes out Coldy as well, but not before Coldy takes out Hillbilly. It means Multicom should be able to get the finish onto Coldy. Uh, I think he sees Duck inside that uh, single-story compound as well. But Coldy hasn't been finished off yet. At least I don't see that in the kill feed, I think. Multicom being very patient. There is Coldy in the corner. Trying to feed as much information to his teammate as possible. Hiding from Multicom, but I'm pretty sure Multicom knows he's there. Hillbilly Phil has now come out. Coldy. Presumably begging for his life at this point. Not really sure what's going on there, or if they're chatting. But it is a f effectively a 4v3 situation. The Hillbillies with a successful push onto Tea Party. Yeah, unmuting's a bad idea, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear that was a really good push though and uh, taking out coldy on the roof was actually quite strategically important because coldy had uh really good like sight lines to two or three of the team hillbilly phil inside the building still and gwen dog is hiding there as well punch takes out coldy duck still across the road in the meantime San Martin is getting a little bit of action. This is team number 13 washed up in Sanok. They're looking at team 16, the Tragic Four. Jaywick down early on, Super Turban, with an excellent shot onto Jaywick. The town is technically big enough for the both of them, but uh, where's the fun in that? Picardo actually isn't contested. MCH, the only team there this time. Still awkwardly tense now. In fact, both of these cities, awkward and tense, early game fight. Lots of iron sights going on as well. There really hasn't been that much time for looting. Jinx leaning in, trying to be of some sort of assistance. Gets a really nice uh, hit onto Overtable. Double. Make that two hits. But he's still on two-thirds health. Jinx is of limited use so far away from the rest of her team. We saw what these guys were capable of, though, last time when they were in Picado, washed up in Sanok. They did very, very well when the team got together, and then when they were completely split, they were just so much less effective. So we'll see how they end up playing this one out. Oh, Duck, meanwhile, on a sliver of health. Tea Party not necessarily enjoying the proceedings here as Soft Brexit. Move in. I believe Duck and Gwendog are both still alive. Gwendog inside the apartment building, basically not moving. She's there against the rest of 
Oh no, at least all the teams have moved on now, but Gwen has just stayed rooted to the spot. Team 9 Hillbillies moving through. Taking more of Chumachera. Duck on 1 HP versus Jonesy and Banana. <gasps> Does Banana see him? Duck choosing not to shoot. Duck shot! That could be a problem because Jonesy's here. What? Jonesy, you lol. <gasps> if Duck wins this fight... Oh my goodness, how is this even happening? Duck is driving Jonesy away. Duck is legit driving Jonesy away. Here comes Gwen from afar. Oh, when Jonesy finds out that Duck was basically on 1 HP the entire time. Oh, this is incredibly intelligent play from Duck. A little bit lucky, but he is using it. He's using it so much right now. Jinx now flanking around to rejoin the rest of her team. A couple of people have seen her as well, which is good. Drawing their fire away, allowing Jinx to get back into a close quarters firefight instead of being so far away. I think that's exactly what Jinx intended to do. So this is helping her team now. They just need to figure out a way to execute. Oh dear, and unfortunately, Mexican brother behind her. Literally the only member of the team that wasn't there. Means that uh, Jinx rejoining her team is not going to be possible. So Wick, Ghost, and Air Tree are going to have to continue as a trio. The early game splits just not working out really today for Washed Up in Sanok. See if they can survive the rest of this. In the meantime, Jonesy versus Gwen and Duck still ongoing in Chumachera. We want to see how the 1 HP Duck manages to fare. Has he actually been able to heal? Let's go ahead and take a look. He's still on- he's on 0 out of 100. The bar at the bottom literally says 0 out of 100. And Jonesy's getting in a car and driving away. Duck, how on earth you did this? I- I don't even know. Just wow. Oh. And Jonesy, how on earth you did that? I don't even- oh Jesus, that's an expensive repair- <gasps> Please, he's on 1 HP! Oh my god, Duck! Duck's- he's not wearing armor, he's wearing something that's bullet repellent. What is going on? Duck's allergic to bullets. Bullets stay away from him. Bullets are allergic to Duck. Damn. He must surely have found a first aid or at least some bandages by now, right? No? Still nothing? Ridiculous. Jonesy doesn't even know. I, I don't even think he's going hunting. Oh, there we go. I'll just inject this into my forearm, and boom! I'm the very spitting image of health. Oh, Jonesy, when you watch this back, my friend. Alright, so that's uh, the action in Chumachera dying down for a little bit. I think the most realistic outcome now is perhaps for Gwen to get a headshot onto Jonesy from somewhere he's not looking with that SLR. Teams now rotating in from the top. Not too much in the way of trouble. I don't see any teams potentially clashing on the way down. Picardo, still a little bit tricky, but not that tricky. Uh, I don't really think anyone's going to meet there. I think several teams will pass through, but I think they'll pass through at different times. So that's fine. We have a crate towards the southern part of the map that I don't think anyone even saw, let alone is going for. So I suspect... When rotating in, it's quite likely that maybe Team 15, I think that's Team 2K, rotating in from Los Leones, there's a chance they will spot this Mark 14, but only a chance. Otherwise, I do not expect this crate to be looted this game. That is Team 15 on the right. Yeah, it is. So it's possible they spot it while driving past on the road. Don't really think anyone else is going to get that crate, to be honest with you. Uh, that's relatively safe. Now, from a scoreboard position... It's all about where Team Hard Brexit, Team 18, actually finish. And you can see there, they are inside the circle, just north of Chumachera at the moment. If they are one of the first teams to get completely eliminated this game, then there is a chance that 2K can surpass them. But they do need Team 18 to be eliminated early. Hard Brexit still very much the favorites to win this tournament going into this game number four.
We've been through both of the third person games, of course, and we've had one of the two first person games as well. This would be the second one of the lot. And I believe we're on the North American server to finish things off here at PUBG Reddit. Now, if you guys are wondering, by the way, how you can get involved in PUBG Reddit, you can go to discord.gg slash PUBG Reddit, join the community and opt into custom games. We have custom games every Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. Anyone can join in. Oh, hang on a second as Vomav gets uh, a couple of shots against him from Team 13. That's washed up in Sana. Oh, wow, and Wick managing to get the kill thanks to the vehicle explosion. I was about to say Vomad just about got away there, but clearly not. So still in the blue, but a good kill for them there. So yeah, go to uh, discord.gg slash PUBG Reddit. Sign up. We have uh, custom games every Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Anyone can join. Everyone is welcome to join as well. And if you come first, second, or third, you get points for the leaderboard, you know, just, just for fun. And anyone with points on the leaderboard throughout the entirety of the season, so, you know, we, we run them for quite a while, uh, can be a team captain in the end of season cust uh, end of season tournament, which is this. So everyone can play. Very lucky not to get knocked off the bike, and that's because Wick finishes the job off. Wick, taking all the kills, man. There we go. And oh dear, did Budio also? He flipped the bike, didn't he? Well, let's look at something else instead, because that's awkward. Do -do 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 -do. No, Sam's hunting for Budio. Which is very mean. Wait! And Wacko Tack. What? I don't know what happened to Team Chundi. Someone will tell me later what happened to Team Chundi. And then we'll have a conversation about what happened to Team Chundi. But right now, what we care about is this fight here the Hillbillies versus Top Tier Trash. And Baconator catching two people by surprise there. Multicom just about surviving and that is two people down that is doge down and fox is about to get finished off as well looks like clover is going to be hightailing it out of their whiff is that katie it is katie in the buggy clover very exposed in the second passenger seat Bill billy phil wanting to get an angle won't find one yet running to the edge spots the buggy now still looking for that kill I have to say, very close to killing Clover there. Very, very close. It's still possible as well. Wisely taking some cover. But not a great position for them to be in by any stretch. And I swear we're going to get a similar circle. A little bit further to the west this time, though. And the crossroads and Valdemar in here as well. Which does make things a little bit interesting. Only the western edge of Chumachera. <gasps> and Team 8, actually. MCH, very close to the crate. Very, very close to the crate. They must see it, right? They're in vehicles as well. Can we check if they've got the crate, please? Let's see. Go on, Sam. Did they get the crate? Is the crate unlooted? Or is it like, has it got like a tax stock in there or something, but it's actually been looted? Let's see. What's in this one? No, it's an M249. It hasn't been looted at all. Interesting. I could have sworn teammate would have seen this, but maybe it landed there already and it was just a little bit too far off of their vision. Team 2 and Team 11 now training a couple of shots. This is Uncle Bobby's Lizard Farm going up against Team Steel Series. Kill one of them, get yourself a mouse. They are basically in this game as bait, ladies and gentlemen. They inserted themselves into this game and said, hey, we have an idea. Kill us and get prizes. This is the very definition of dangling yourself in front of piranhas as bait. I would never do that with Hungry Gamers. These Steel Series boys, they are brave, ladies and gents. Of course, it's not just downs. You have to kill them as well. Uh, Sergo? Okay. Boomer? I am one with the bush. The bush is with me. I am one with the bush. The bush is with me. I am one with the bush. The bush is with me. I am one with the bush. The bush is with me. Oh my god. <laughs> oh dear you guys have outdone yourself shattered empire there's not a lot of cover on miramar i applaud you for doing what you just did bravo wick getting taken out through the window there by gamecore oh me oh my very nicely done can't finish off the kill, though. The rest of his team are there to revive. Uh, 
Ayub looking for some of Team 2. Spots the head of one of them. Blizzard Farmer in a little bit of trouble. They are quite far away, though. Accuracy from that range is difficult. Oh, they are right next to Steel Series. Steel Series right now are saying, Nobody make a move. Don't move a muscle. Oh my goodness, Team 2K have no idea. And they do now, Piper Dog gets two. That's Ayub and Kira both down. Grenade coming in. Mild panic. Slight confusion. All good now. <gasps> Sprucey with the double there on Mr. Muffs and Magnum. Hard Brexit making moves. Doesn't look like they're going to be one of the first teams out at this rate, does it? Wreck Pal, the last person to fall on Team 8. The MCH Pound Boys are eliminated by Hard Brexit. We have people coming across the bridge into Valdemar. They're going to move straight past Team Poop G. Oh, they're under the bridge, not on top of the bridge. Okay, that is entirely irrelevant now as Team DX move past completely and utterly unhindered. Ah, well. Never mind. Potential opportunity for somebody else down the line. They are rocking up straight next to the rest of Team 2K. They've just been decimated by none other than Steel Series, and now they have DX to fight against the rest of their team. They're being very quiet. There's really not much they can do. Oh, this is not fun at all. Vertex and Islo. They're not enjoying this. Kira and Ayu already down. Already out of the game. Their advantage, though, is that DX think they're alone here. They're making a lot of noise and not caring. Never mind, Vertex has made his presence known definitely as HBK goes down to his spray from the ground floor. Now Team 7, no, they're not alone. It's a 2v2 situation. Germer. Germer? Gamer. Wow, it's reached that time of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Germer. It's firing Bruritz. Must be half asleep. What is going on with me? Makin. Looking for a way to get up another pick. They kind of need one at this point. Started with the numbers advantage. They haven't got it anymore. <gasps> KT out in the open. Doom Buffalo switching onto the sniper. He's suppressed. Almost getting a headshot with his first bullet. Now running. Will it be fast enough? It won't be. KT goes down. Rest of the team nearby. Top tier trash now. Clover inside this building. But really not much he can do. And we're going to go with the camp at the top of the stairs strategy. Because that works all the time. It's alright. If I zoom in it'll be fine. I do this too. <laughs> Next circle has been revealed, ladies and gentlemen. It is phase four. In one minute's time, the circle will move again. This time, we have a very interesting hard shift north. Oh my. Well, Clover knows people are there. Unfortunately, that is going to be a that. Adi Shaw will finish off team number 10. The top tier trash goes down. We are down to 13 teams now. Very interesting shift up towards Ladrilla. So this is going to play out differently to the first three games we have, despite the initial circles being quite the same direction. Duplex looking for some long-range finishes with the SKS. That is silenced as well. That hardly matters at this range. It's difficult to hit anything silenced or not. They are looking at Team 13 washed up in Sanok. All these teams rotating north are going to have to do so via the low ground, I think, where it's less rocky. It's just way too exposed unless you hug the bottom of a cliff. So we could see a few of these teams run into each other on the way into the circle from the south side, I think, this time around. Piper Dog. Steel Series being a little bit more adventurous now with their shot selection. Oh, hang on a second. And we swap over to Gamecore just in time to see him eliminated from the game by what I think is the last member of Uncle Bobby's Lizard Farm. Bat Smoker. But we have uh, Zaf Dog coming up on the back of him as well. So much action happening right now. Stovall gets a headshot onto Parody UK as Slug and Donsel finish the majority of Team Dadaral, and I think that is them out of the game as well, absolutely wiping them off the face of the map. Fendog very close now to an enemy on the west side. 
Spruce, he's still outside the circle, but looking for more. Poob G have to rotate in past them. That's going to be the next big fight, in my opinion. Here comes the Adrenaline. Quite early on, I have to say. I don't know how many more he has, though, so... Finishes off Parody UK. Stovall, if you didn't already have a mouse, you definitely have one now. Finishing off a member of Steel Series. Fendog, very close to them. Not sure they realize it yet. Oh, well, they definitely realize it because Fendog is just... Actually, Fendog was shot up by someone else. So Batsmoker and Stovall might not know the Fendog is there. I have to do something soon, though. This next circle is going to be very annoying for Steel Series. Oh, Sergo, not again. Uh, Stovall finishes off Pipe Piper Dog, and that's, by the way, further back. So Fendog still very close to them indeed. Team 6 and 12, so close. Here comes Fendog. Fendog's giving away his position. With the Vector there, that scoped Vector doesn't look like he's able to get any purchase from it. It's only him and Poseidon left, and he is in full retreat right now. Stovall knows roughly his position. Can it move down to the next ridge to try and get a clear shot on him? Batsmoker on his right-hand side, covering the flank. Speculative grenade. Man, if that hit, my mind would have been blown. As well as Fendog. But it did not. Alas. Alright. Lizard Farm defending their position well. Very close to the edge of the circle. What Stovall needs to do is knock one of them and let his teammate finish the kill. Spread the mice around, man. You're limited to one. Oh, and a collapse into the center. Oh, this is going to be a bloodbath. I think Team 18 are now in a good position. Hard Brexit, actually. Oh, the only people that can consistently stay in cover in, like, little dips and stuff, and they're able to prone and sort of protect their position. Super Turban needs to come to the aid of Overtable. Knows that there are people up north there, though. Looks like his teammate's telling him to go. Moving further away, abandoning the idea of resurrecting his teammate. Airtree will be able to get that kill. Still looking for them up top. I think I'd rather hug the rock, to be honest. Or the cliff and go a little bit further. Because as soon as you're seen here, there's nowhere to run. Can't see it being that good. Sergo, though, is being incredibly conservative. Which I guess is good. Oh, he just spotted the top of him. He's told Boomer, get up here. I've just seen someone. Well, if he hasn't seen him before, he certainly does now. Mitchell Boomer takes down Super Turbin. Doom Buffalo takes down Slug. By the way, can I just give some props to the Observer at that point? Sam had to choose between two kills that he absolutely know were going to happen. <laughs> Hate it when that happens. But we caught them both. Kind of. Right. Team 9 rocking up behind Team 18. This could be interesting. The Hillbillies could actually play spoiler here for Hard Brexit. Team Poob G as well, very close. If they end up fighting, Hard oh, Brexit could actually be let off the hook. So a lot of possibilities at work here. Habitual Boomer nearly gets his noggin taken off by Ghost in the first instance. Looking in a slightly different location now the next time he peeks. Addy Shore spots Gwendog. Behind her. Is Gwendog seen? Never mind. Third party, thank you very much. Multicom says, cheers, love. And he rolls down the hill. Certainly Gwen would spot the body there. Yeah, and look at this. Instantly going prone. <gasps> Next to a crate. Very interesting. So uh, we have teams 12 and 13. Shattered Empire washed up on Sano. Could be contesting this in a little while, but it's very unlikely they'll be able to get it anytime soon because it's just so in the open with three or four teams surrounding it in this compound. We also have teams 17 and 18, Poop G and Hard Brexit. 
Donsel and Sprucey playing as a duo at the moment, doing their best to stay alive. Oh, it must be so painful seeing the crate and not being able to go for it. But realistically, it's not possible. Lots of people now moving in. They're going to have to... Oh, this is such a difficult circle to move into as well because you have the road and the low ground either side of it, essentially. Baconade are taking the head off of Sprucey. I don't know if there's going to be a spare helmet in that compound, but the hillbillies are going to start rushing. Uh, they have to as well. In 30 seconds' time, they have to descend the mountain and be in view of literally everybody. It is not going to be fun for them at all. Grenade. A grenade or 10. Multicom. Oh no, grenading his teammate. That nade must have bounced back because that is Hillbilly Phil that's gone down. Donsel jumping out the side, getting a second down, looking for the third down on Baconator. Baconator will be able to finish them off, and Team 18 is eliminated. That was a close call, but Hard Brexit goes out in ninth place. Very close to winning the 1v3 there, Donsel and the boys. Very, very close. Now, does this open the door for Team 2K? Because Team 15 are still alive, and we now know that Hard Brexit are out in ninth place. They'll know that as well. And they have a really good position near the center of the circle, but they are not done yet. They're sharing the compound with someone else as well. All sorts of action going on. And look at this on the west side. No fewer than three teams here. We have the rest of Team Steel Series as well as Uncle Bobby's Lizard Farm and DX, all in the same vicinity. That's the rest of Steel Series gone. We can at least confirm that. Now these guys are potentially going to be fighting it out amongst themselves for who is going to win this southwestern quadrant of the circle. Islo and Vertex, still a duo as Iob and Kira got taken down by Steel Series earlier in the game. Our Steel Series is going to be playing the spoiler here. 2K trying to stay alive, trying to make it. Uh, with a lot that they really need to make it with kills as well to be perfectly honest because at the end of the day They need to make up a whole ton of points right one teammate chucking the frag in Other person running it's in the opposite corner doom buffalo did well to stay and not move But they're still trapped there Vertex looking for another angle. Sergo goes down to Baconator. That's another team wipe for the Hillbillies. They are on an absolute tear right now. Still only two of them left, but they have been so good when they've been aggressive. So, so good. We're seeing a very, very different side to them uh, this game. They've been so successful in these pushes. Space Army 77 just about surviving still. Needs to get picked up by his teammate. They are completely hunkered down and trapped by Team 2K right now. Space Army back up. Team 9 playing the edge. Hillbillies struggling just a tad. But the next circle will help them a lot. Still a building or two. Still those shacks in. Oh, Baconator so close to going down. Eyes low. Gets Classic. Classic or Classic? Depending on where in the world you're from. Airtree, though, is going to go ahead and grab that. Every kill matters right now as Team 2K try to top the leaderboard. All to play for here in the fourth and final game of the PUBG Reddit end of season tournament sponsored by Steel Series. And a lot of nice swag is on the line as well. Ghost takes out Baconator. Baconator's actually been the terror of so many of these people in the open. Space Army 73. Oh no, he goes down as well. He's one of the guys the Team 15 were trying to kill. Islow won't be happy with that at all. Vertex gets a knock onto McKean. Moors gets Doom Buffalo. Every kill. The Team 2K could have gotten has been taken from under their noses and now they're going to have to fight Team DX who are outside in the smokes, not inside cornered in that shack where they would rather them be. Oh my, this is... I mean, it, they're not out of it yet, but this is certainly not fun for them right now. Gamer should be within the sights of Vertex 2K from where he is, but Moaz is right there. And this could end up being a 2v1. Islow is probably going to have to go to his teammate's aid. Otherwise, it's going to end up being a 2v1. 
Vertix rushing out. Desperation time and Moaz gets him. Islo, the last remaining member of Team 2K. And he's going up in a 1v3 right now. This is not a good situation at all. He actually needs to leave. But he, there's no way for him to know that for sure. He's trapped. Now these guys are the ones being trapped. They were holding other people hostage before. Now the tables have turned. And suddenly Team 2K are looking very, very worse for wear. They made it into the top three. That's important. But the points haul, I'm not, I, I just don't think it's enough. Team 13 and Team 7. We have washed up in Sarnok and DX also in the top three alongside Team 2K. Mackin and Moors both going down. The blue zone actually taking them out. All of a sudden, it's just Gamer over here with Islo. It's actually possible now for them to know it's not. They're out in third place. I don't think that's enough, really. The next circle centers on the two players from Washed Up in Sanok. Ghost and Airtree holding them down. Gamer has to move and he knows it. 30 seconds between him and what must surely be a massive uphill battle. He can look for angles as much as he wants, but in reality... Ghost and Airtree don't need to worry about them. Gamer has to come to them. And he knows it. Getting ready to rock up the other side of the road. The only advantage Gamer has is that they don't know where he is yet, but they will know soon. <gasps> Two shots onto Airtree with the SKS to start off the engagement. Ghost would have spotted him as well. The teammates are now communicating. This 2v1, incredibly important. So useful. It's not just having two guns. It's having the communication. It's having the sight lines. It's having someone cover for you while you heal. 37 seconds until the next zone moves in. Gamer nearly made it a 1v1. He did so, so well. <gasps> Another hit onto Ghost. Gamer is playing this incredibly. But he has to get a quick knock onto one of them. The blue zone is not his friend right now. That just chunked like nobody's business. This is horrific for him. He's crossing a road. How is it they've not noticed? <gasps> he could crawl into the next circle after crossing the road. Ghost and Airtree don't know he's on the same side of the road yet. Oh my god. Gamer continues to defy the odds here. He's going to heal himself up if he gets a quick headshot onto one of these guys early on. He stands a chance of winning the game. This is washed up in Sarnok versus DX. It's the fourth and final game. In the PUBG Reddit Custom Games end of season tournament. They must know he's there now. Yes, Airtree has spotted him. And that's a headshot from the M4. But what great positioning. Really, really well played. It just wasn't quite good enough to prevent Washed Up in Sarnok from winning game number four of four. Airtree, Jay Wick, Ghost, and Jinx. Congratulations. That is eight kills. But please, can we have a round of applause for DX as well? Moaz Gamer. Makin and HBK with seven kills. Really, really strong showing at the end of the game there. And Gamer gave us a few glimpses of hope. Team 2K, Vertix, Islo, Ayub, and Kira will come third only with two kills. Now that's surprising considering their position. But I feel like they didn't have the killer instinct when it came to closing out. Those people that they had, for example, trapped in the shack next to them. And a couple of other scenarios where they could have gotten the credit for five or six more kills but didn't get it. I don't really think that'll be enough to see them take top spot on the leaderboard. But we did see hard Brexit go out really early on in the round. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the points stack up at the end of the day. We're going to be tallying up the points and also concluding who gets what prizes. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. The PUBG Reddit Custom Games End of Season Tournament prizes and announcements of standings will be with you in just a couple of minutes. See you then. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, exciting times as we have the scores for the end of the PUBG Reddit October Custom Games End of Season Tournament. Congratulations to Hard Brexit, who hold on and managed to win with 1,780 points and 42 kills to their name. A staggering 16 kills apiece in games 1 and 2. 
they win themselves the Arctis Pro headset and they get one per player as well. Congratulations to them. In second place, we have Team 2K. Fantastic effort and nearly giving us a glimmer of hope at the end of game number four, but not quite able to close out. They win, though, the rival 600 mouse. And again, that's one per player. And in third place, we have Team Poob G, who sneak in by 20 points, doing an incredible job in game four and managing to get that spot by just 20 points, 1,195 total. They win themselves a rival 310 or a Sensei 310 mouse. And again, that is one per player. Now, I also have a list of the people. Uh who killed the Steel Series members. Now, I'm going to caveat with what, what I'm about to say with anyone who's already won a mouse, so not a headset, but a mouse, uh, out of this list of people will only be eligible to win one mouse. So if they're first, second, or third, whatever mouse they win trumps this. However, in game one, we had Ayub with uh, two kills, Kira with one kill, and Vertic with one kill. No surprise at Team 2K. Got all of Steel Series there. That uh, that encounter was quite brutal. In game two, we have Sergo, Habitual Boomer, and Super Turban, who downed two, uh, sorry, killed rather two of the Steel Series team. In game three, uh, the spoils are shared between Banana and Vertix again, which killed uh, two people each. And in game four, we have Gamer, Batsmoker, and Stovel. Stovel killed two. So uh, if your name is mentioned there and you're outside of the top three, you will still get a mouse. And of course, those inside the top three will receive whatever the best mouse is that they happen to win. Fantastic stuff. And again, not only thank you to Steel Series for uh, giving us the prizes for this tournament, but frankly, massive thanks for playing and kudos for painting great big target signs over your head and just going out there and giving it all you've got that it was a lot of fun having you guys here we're really thrilled that you're part of the community and we look forward to welcoming you forget about the end of season tournament just in the general uh everyday custom games i look forward to seeing you guys again soon but that does mean we're gonna have to close things out for now congratulations to hard brexit team 2k and team poob g for finishing in those top three positions massive thanks to steel series for the prizes thank you as well to coldy clover dan bennett and sam walton for observing and everyone else behind the scenes who make this volunteer community what it is and helping out putting this together but yeah, it is. Congratulations once again to Hard Brexit. They negotiated with many other members of Miramar and they came out on top. And they didn't quite bring in 350 million pounds a week, but they did bring in over 350 points per game. They fell out early in game number three, but with nine kills, they took back control of the standings for game number four. With strong and stable play, able to finish out and win that first place. So congratulations to them. They will take home the spoils. Leaderboard's about to be reset, and we will see you next week for new custom games. Take care, everyone. Have a good night. I'm Jorosar.